So I have a very special guest with us today here on Bottom of the Clutch. I have Scott Forster with us. Scott was the original, the OG MLB Showdown champion back from 2001. Scott, how are you doing today? Good. How you doing, Sean? Oh, I'm doing fantastic. I've been looking forward to this for a while. So uh, let's right. talk about it. One of the best baseball seasons of all time. Barry Bonds breaking the home run record. The Mariners breaking the win record. Ichiro, Rookie of the Year, MVP, Ripken's last season. Like the whole, it was the it was the golden era of baseball for me. So tell me about the golden era of you winning the national championship. Right. All right. So uh, I won a uh, I won a regional uh, in St. Louis. The Wizards of the Coast was out in I think they're still out in Seattle. And the All-Star Game was out in Seattle, so they're like, we're going to do M the first ever MLB Showdown Nationals out here at the All-Star Game at the Fan Fest. Paid for us to go out there. It was great. You've got this huge convention center, all these people getting their cards signed. They had, you know, like, pitching cages and batting cages. I was a big Ichiro fan, and, uh, you know, I was a big uh, Sosa fan at the time, and they were probably there. I just, you know... I was like, I gotta be all focused for the big event. I gotta go perform. I can't be distracted by all the stuff that's going on. Right? <laughs> so, so tell me before, what did it take to get to that point? What did it take to get to the national championship that year? There were two routes. You had to either win a regional, or you had to win the day before last chance qualifier. How did it go for you? Like, give us some details about it. Were there any dramatic moments? Any big walk off hits? Or oh, oh my gosh. Okay, so I had my whole deck was built around re rolls and um, bonuses. So there was no one card per at bat rule back then, so they're like, I'm going to re-roll, I'm going to throw down three pointers at plus nine, hit a home run on your pitcher card, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Oh my gosh, you could just double up like that back then, I forgot yeah. about that. So my first round, I'm the only one at the tournament, as far as I can see, that does not have Pedro Martinez as their number one starter. <laughs> so I'm sitting there going, well, I'm going to lose round one, and then I'll make it up in the in the uh, future round. Hey, if anyone deserves to be that good, it's 2001 Pedro. From that 99 range to 2001... Right, Absolute right. beast in the steroid era. So the biggest key play of the entire weekend was in the quarterfinal. He, at some point, does something illegal. He, he is a, a basic mistake, but like he drew too many cards or whatever. The judge comes over and is like, okay, so we need to eject your highest cost player from the game. Wait, wait, wait. Before to review this, how did they review this? Or just based off your word, or did they go to a video it's review? Just, uh, the, there were no, there was no video uh, <laughs> until the final game. The judge was like, eject, out of here, your highest cost player. I think he might have had Carlos Delgado as well. So his first baseman, oh wow, gone. He had, and he didn't have a backup first baseman. We were playing National League rules. He put in his his usual DH at first base, but that takes him to a minus one uh, fielder rating there because like playing out of position, zero to minus one. Later in the game high game i got a guy running for the plate he's got a potential no. double play ball he misses the roll by one. Oh, did, was it a tie it was a tie yeah oh yeah, my tie god goes if he'd had uh if he hadn't made that mistake turn the double play that run doesn't score that ends up being the game winning run of the game and your so, first ever national champion right there right and then that was just the playoffs after that uh it was actually anticlimactic <laughs> like we got to the final and uh it's playing against gary quinn from chicago he had uh, another another national champion, if I'm not wrong, right? Yeah, that's right. He won in 2002, where you had to not only play regular uh, MLB Showdown through the Swiss rounds, but then when they got to the playoffs, they did a draft. So you threw out your old team, and you did an eight-man draft. It's the only year they did that, the final that year against Gary. So he's got Randy Johnson as his number four pitcher. I've as his Gary number four. Wood. His number four is Randy <laughs> Johnson. I've got Randy as my number one, and then Carrie, uh, Carrie Wood as my number four. So there's a difference in uh, slight difference in philosophy. Yeah, my pitching strategy was all around, um, I'm going to have 17 outs on all my pitchers. Yeah. Like, I don't care what the control number is. If I roll a high number on my D20 on my pitch, we're good. But anyway, that final game was really anticlimactic. Like, uh, he gave up at least one grand slam. I mean, it was like 12 to 4. Like, it was over in the fifth inning, and we were both just, like, kind of going through the motions. And, oh, I remember they had uh, they had a video team there uh -huh. that uh, they was recording the game, and I was like, is this going to be on ESPN2? What's going on? Because <laughs> <laughs> they were showing Magic on ESPN2 or 3 or you know, 8, you know, oh, wow. at, at the time. So I've got bases loaded. We roll our dice. I start picking up all my players, putting them away. I'm, like, trying to be really cool and calm and collected. I don't want to, you know, celebrate in the guy's face or anything. And the uh, 
the guy who's like directing the video, he's like, oh, was that an out? I'm like, no, that was a grand slam. <laughs> 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 no, that was, that was a, uh, that was Gary rolls a one, I roll a 20. Good strats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you throw strategy cards out the window then. Yeah, right. <laughs> so what'd you win? What was the prize that year? So the prize that year, there was a big, uh, big trophy. They gave me two tickets to the All Star Game, which was happening the next day. And the runner up, Gary, he got uh, tickets to the Home Run Derby that night. He's like, had to literally leave right out of the convention center to get to the Home Run Derby on time. So <laughs> that was that was really nice. But yeah, uh, yeah it, was, uh, it was a good time. How did the tournament and the the gameplay? How did that scene change over the years from two thousand one, from when you won it all, to two thousand four or five? I had been a magic player, so I was looking for card combos. By 2002 or 2003, we were figuring out how to draw through your whole deck. And then when you had the you had cards that were like, put a card from your discard on the bottom of your deck. I'm like, cool, the bottom of my deck is also the top of my deck. So I'm basically just drawing cards out of the discard pile. Oh, wow. So there was just ways to kind of cheese the system a little bit. Yeah, exactly. And like in 2001, hardly anybody was doing that. Everybody was just playing nice, wholesome baseball, you know. Like, I remember reading an article about how there was some kind of thing in a tournament where it, it supposedly opponents, adults were competing against, you know, maybe kids that were my age and didn't know any better, that they were intentionally right. walking like 17 batters in a row to lead off the game. And yes, sir. It. That, was, that was the 2002 uh, metagame, if you will. The rule at the time was you couldn't pull a pitcher until he was actually tired. You got a six-inning starter out there, and it's the first inning. You can't actually pull him until he's IP zero, which would be 18 runs given up. You look at the other person's pitcher and you're like, okay, you can't pull him until I've put 18 on him. Intentionally walk enough guys to give you 10, 12 runs. Then I'm going to play this card that says, if you're losing, count up how many runs you're losing by and draw that many cards. Oh, I've got three or four cards to start the game. I'm down 12. Draw 12. Hey, I've got four of these in the deck. I found another one. Draw 12 more. Draw 12 more. Got your whole deck in your hand. No. uh now oh, you can start. Oh wow! You can throw start throwing down all the permanent cards like rally cap, and there was one that stuck to a pitcher that stayed on him until he was uh, pulled from the game. Uh, and you would just you would get your offense so beefed up that in that first or second inning, before they could pull the guy because they had to leave him in until he was actually tired, um, you would just pile on an equal or higher number of runs. And then the start is blown in. Uh, in for the first inning, and you've, of course, not put any points into your starters. You've just got a huge bullpen. And so now you've got your whole, you've drawn your whole deck, and you've got those cards that are like, oh, I put a card from your discard back on the bottom of your deck, or whatever. And so you've just got con total control of your strategy cards and have completely blown the other guy's mind. He's like, what? You're going <laughs> to intentionally walk? 15 guys in a row and then we're going to start playing i hadn't played the strategy much that year so i ended up occasionally walking like just a few too many guys I'm like oh i need to be behind i can make up nine runs so i walk 12 guys and then okay then we're going to start playing baseball single single double okay i'm now down 12 runs i thought i could make back nine i you know I <laughs> 10 or 11 runs back and lost the game because i didn't know the strategy well enough but yeah. all the guys did. And, but yeah, it didn't feel like baseball at all. It was basically, you know, magic, the baseball game. Everything from when we started the, you know, clutch, you know, in 2013, 14, when we started getting into it, our, our number one priority was just like, we want to make this as close to baseball as we can, as close to a simulation, and kind of just give you the power in your strategy cards that you feel like you're still making a difference, but you're not cheesing yeah. the system like that. Like that persisted. They kept coming up with solutions. They kept rotating cards out. The 2004 Nationals... There was, again, an if-you're-losing card. The first round of that top eight, two of the guys I'd been testing with, were like best friends, got paired against each other. It's worth who was running the game. He comes over to me, and he's like, so who's going to win this uh, tournament, do you think? And I'm like, whoever wins this game. <laughs> whoever wins Whoever guys, wins the first inning getting out of this lot. <laughs> whoever wins between these two guys, they've, that deck is the best strategy. The losing play, getting control as a batter, and randomly rolling a 20 and getting a home run, and then being accidentally ahead so the other guy could access his deck strategy and oh, get no. on his cards <laughs> and then blow up on you for like nine runs. There was also the card that if you hit a home run and you've got the home run icon, discard the other guy's entire hand. <laughs> oh, you cleared out the other guy's hand while you've got, you know, a 20-card hand. 
that's just the other guy's just rolling dice Man. and you've got your whole deck in your hand. You know what though, to be fair, if I'm gonna look back at a time in baseball where steroids, you know, have a cloud looming over it, this kinda <laughs> sounds like the game was kind of on par for the sport at the time. The yeah, right? The deck is the steroids. How much can you uh, get yeah, yeah. I mean I I was, you know, you can I'll I'll come forward and be the Conseco about it and admit now in two thousand four I ran the big bench theory that people were right. running where people were using the one fifths bench players and they were unloading them in the seventh inning. I was stocking up on my pitchers. You know, I had Warren Spahn. I had Roy Halladay back then. You throw out these dominant starters, keep the game close, and then, you know, bring the whole big bench. And I'm sure you did that in 2004 as well. Yeah, that was, that was I'd forgotten. That was another part of the strategy. You've got all those cards. And, <laughs> oh, bottom of the seventh, uh, Barry Bonds is feeling better now. I guess it's time to pitch. 2003 yeah. Barry Bonds, the, the, yeah, yeah, right. the on-base 16 one, yeah. <laughs> yeah, let me just... Uh... I'm going to lead off with Barry Bonds because i got to get a guy on. And yeah. then, uh, you know, uh, it, was, it was nuts. I mean, this could have been, you know, rumor or hearsay, but I remember hearing that one of the maybe 2003, two, 2003 champion maybe won and supposedly was a Cubs fan but didn't know who Ernie Banks was. Yeah, it uh, could be right. Uh, yeah. That was, I don't want to call anybody out, but I think that was Keith Pioro. Yeah. There's a wiki page out there somewhere. I'm like accessing <laughs> yeah. ancient memories here. So how do you feel like the tournament scene changed between 2001 to when you, you know, it ended and was it for, for better or the worse or what was that? Would you feel like that was part of the downfall of the game and why it kind of became discontinued? Later on, more than half the people I'd say at a tournament were using these sort of non-baseball, <laughs> very card game strategies. Yeah. And yeah, I definitely saw like guys who had been in our league were very excited about baseball. They they would only show up occasionally, and when they did, they get wrecked by one of these you know card shenanigans decks rather than yeah. a baseball team. And they're just like, okay, whatever, I'll I'll go play PlayStation. You know, yeah. and obviously the reason uh, they ended up uh, crumbling was that uh, Tops, I think, got the exclusive. That's when they started doing exclusive trading card uh, licenses, so nobody else could make MLB licensed trading cards. So Showdown was just like, well. We're done. Yeah, well, we're cur done. currently they're under contract until 2020. So do you feel like that was the, the sole point of the game ending in 2005, or do you feel like it was a little bit of both? Or um, I feel like the fact that Wizards didn't even put on a national in 2005, that they just, you know, they were like, all the previous years, regionals winners got an invite to nationals. They put they put all put them all up in hotels. They paid airfare. Yeah. And that's a big expense. They have they decided to just take all that money and spread it out into season tickets for all those regional winners. And I feel like that was them saying, you know what, it's everybody getting together isn't, uh, you know, it's, it's not something we can, we can push. And there's always going to be people who are playing just for the fun of it. And there's always going to be people who are playing um, because they can be really good at a game and get wins. And there's always going to be people who are playing because they can get cool promo stuff. You played in league and you got those, those blue... Remember those blue promo cards that uh, I think there were different colors each year. I mean, that'd be a neat thing to do. To like, hey, host a host a tournament in your store, and here's some exclusive tournament only promo cards. For those that don't know, I mean, we had our first tournament last year in Philly. We had about 16 <laughs> people there, all from the East Coast. It was a uh, it was fantastic for our first event. You know, we've we've had our limited edition cards, like you said, promo cards. I think our Philly cards were awesome, like Schmidt. We had our Halloween specials, our Valent Valentine's Day ones. Let's take one last view at uh, Scott. This is in 2001, him winning that national championship. Now, uh, Scott, back on the clutch scene now, looking into it for this year, I'm sure our fans would really appreciate it. Maybe they saw some in-game action. They've been requesting it through video. So uh, how would you feel about maybe you and me going uh, mano a mano in our 2018 clutch? Maybe some video feed on there. Oh, I'm ready. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll have to get a 2001 Kerry Wood card for you to throw out there. Yeah. Just, yeah, just give me, that. just give me the 2001 Pedro, and we're good. <laughs> hey, it's, it worked out before. It'll be fine. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I, I really appreciate you coming on, Scott. First MLB Showdown champion, national champion, 2001. I hope we maybe see you active on our forums now on our website. Uh, if you haven't been to our website yet, www.clutchmoment.com. Scott, thanks for coming on. Thanks for coming on Bottom of the Clutch, and we, we hope to have you back on soon. Oh, uh, yeah, it was a pleasure. Thanks, man. Yeah, nice having you.